We begin this New Year's Eve with subdued celebrations, as well as a longing to put a painful year behind us, even as we burnish hopes for better days ahead. But we know this is true. 2021 will begin much the way 2020 is ending, with suffering and a twinge of uncertainty. As we come on the air tonight, COVID, which emerged on the world's radar just about a year ago, has killed more than 34 for 344,000 Americans. Records, whether we want them to or not, continue to fall, as more than 3,700 deaths were recorded in the United States in each of the past two days. And more than 125,000 Americans will begin this new year in hospitals. Tonight, Times Square, as is the custom, will once again be the centerpiece of our national celebration. The ball will drop, but few will see it in person. You see, police are keeping the crowds away to prevent the spread of the virus. And in Los Angeles, Police are out in force to crack down on parties. California remains the pandemic's epicenter, with hospitals there simply overwhelmed. Help in the form of a vaccine appears slow in coming. Tonight, the CDC says fewer than 3 million Americans will have received that first dose, far short of the Trump administration's projection of 20 million doses by the end of this year. There is a lot of new reporting for you and your family tonight. Our team is following every angle. CBS's Nikki Batiste leads off our coverage from New York City's Times Square. Nikki, good evening. Major, about a million people normally fill these Times Square streets behind me to ring in the new year. But this year, as you can see, they're closed to the public. The NYPD says anyone who tries to gather here tonight will be asked to move along, except for 40 frontline workers who are invited to watch the crystal ball drop. This empty New Year's Eve epicenter is a familiar scene around the world tonight. In England, the prime minister ordered people to stay home. And despite a fireworks display in Sydney, the harbor below was a ghost town as the clock ticked midnight. But in Wuhan, China, thousands rang in 2021 wearing masks. In Wisconsin tonight, a hospital pharmacist was arrested for intentionally destroying more than 500 doses of the COVID vaccine. Police say he left the vials out of refrigeration overnight, knowing they'd be useless. We're really not able to make any judgments on motive at this time. As the U.S. counts down to 2021, the CDC is projecting 80,000 Americans will die in the next three weeks from COVID-19. You should really just appreciate the time you have with the people that you love. Pamela Addison's 44-year-old husband, Martin, a hospital speech pathologist and father to their two-year-old daughter and baby boy, was among the nearly 343,000 Americans who have died from COVID-19. Pamela is now part of a group of about 80 women and men who also lost their spouses and partners to the coronavirus. Is there any one thing that any of them has said to you that has really resonated with you? When they say, I'm so fast, thankful that I found this group because you truly understand. I think that is what is so meaningful to me. A nurse held Martin's hand in the hospital during what would be his final FaceTime call with Pamela. It happened to be the anniversary of when he asked me to marry him. We, I just reminisced about that day and how I would say yes all over again and that I loved him. And even though he was heavily sedated, um, he squeezed her hand and tried to open his eyes. And two days later, he died. Pamela Addison told me her husband always said, tomorrow is not promised. Mayor Bill de Blasio announced today that New York City will hold a day of remembrance on March 14th, 2021, one year after the first COVID-19 death here. Major. Much to remember. Nikki Batiste, thank you so much.